the 90s, you know, it's, it's really hard for female rappers to, you know, break their music and, and, and be, more, more, be more on the mainstream level. You know, why is that? Hmm. Well, there's a multitude of reasons, but I think um, focusing on the positive, there are a lot of uh, female MCs coming up in, like, the underground scene that are doing quite well. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Angel Hayes, but she's, like, fucking incredible. I highly encourage you to look her up. Um, Iggy Azalea is doing very well for herself. She's touring with Beyonce. Um, Kitty Pride, we got Sean. Debbie is doing great. She was just here last week. Um, you know, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of females on the rise. Um, but, like I said before, you know what I'm saying, there's also a lot of uh, females that get involved um, I think for the wrong reasons, as well as male rappers in terms of seeking money, of seeking fame, and not really trying to maintain and stay true to hip hop culture and keep it real and be true and be about the music and the lyricism and and some things like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so you know when that happens, it just kind of gets sort of diluted and oversaturated. And then with the internet, and you can jump on your MacBook and record a song in five minutes and you know, put it out, it's just, it's everywhere. So when, when it's like in a sea of people, if you're looking at a crowd of a thousand people, it's going to be much harder to find that one person. It's like looking for a needle in a haystack, as opposed to a much smaller group of people, you can identify a star or a power player within that group much more easily. Um, and you know, right. Nikki's been on the come up since, you know what I'm saying, the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. She was still kind of, she was pushing back in the day before there really even was this boom of female rappers or rappers in general. Um, and I think that all, all that we can really hope for is that when push comes to shove, the talent will speak for itself and hopefully some of the gimmicks will fade out. Like, that's what I'm really hoping is because, because hip hop culture has changed so much over the last decade, I'm hoping that with people like Kendrick, with people like Drake, you know what I'm saying, that bring real rap to the table, that people will start to look to that and and become refocused on hip hop culture of the elements of hip hop rather than money, fame, your Jay Z's, you know what I'm saying, trying to be these big fat cats in the industry and, and sort of all of that kind of stuff because the motivation changes and I think that for a lot of rappers that are just after money or just after fame, like you need to recognize that as a rapper, you're in the wrong line of work. Because if you want to make money in the music industry, there's literally a hundred other jobs you could do where you're gonna make much more money than trying to be a rapper. And uh, you know, the '90s is the is the time that gave us that misconception that you know if you become a rapper and you're really good, you can be rich and powerful. And that's simply not the case anymore because it's oversaturated. So my advice is if you're rapping and you're trying to get rich or get famous or do whatever you're trying to do, become a manager, become a producer, go into another line of work. You know what I'm saying? Even get a desk job at Sony or something like that and they'll pay you more than they're paying the rappers because there's too many of us. There's no, there's like a, an oversupply of them which is diminishing the demand. You know what I'm saying? So, shoot. I mean, I was out here in 2010, but I wasn't involved in the scene the way I am now. I've only really became seriously involved in the scene and, and been on the show circuit for like the last year. And I have heard lots and lots of things. Um, I've heard all kinds of stories and, and I've slowly started to put to together like my own history map of everything that's sort of happened in the last five years around here. Because up until even I think six months ago, I didn't realize it was as new as it was. I thought it was as old as the Houston rap scene. And um, and then someone put me on game, and they were like, no, we've been out here for about five years, and that's it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's really not been real serious like it is now for very long at all. Um, and I didn't realize that, you know, the Sam Lau and myself and, um, you know, some of the other sort of prominent female MCs in the scene um, were kind of like the firsts. You know what I'm saying? Like, And I didn't know that until someone pointed that out to me um, not too long ago at a show. Someone had approached me and they were like, you do know that you're kind of like breaking new ground here. Like mm -hmm. like the Granada where they organized recently that uh, it was like all local hip hop acts and ADD and Blue the Misfit and Sam Lau. That was like a huge fucking thing. 
because they brought out more than a thousand people for local acts mm -hmm. and that I found out that night that that was um, something that had really never been done before at that volume mm -hmm. and so that was like a really powerful thing and a lot of people were just feeling really good that night because that was like that was a, a sign that you know we're on the right path we're doing something right we can do this we can make this happen and that's like that's what I want for Dallas because I feel like a lot of people in Dallas a lot of the musicians they're sort of waiting for someone to to come in and sign them or save them or take them away and you know what I'm saying give them a contract of some sort and I think that once Dallas can stop putting their hopes on other people outside of the area and start looking at the strength that we have in the area and realizing that everyone we need every profession every job that exists in the industry we have our own version of it here we can start our own record labels we can start our own movements here and those can grow colossal where we will become pioneers because it has never been done here before right. you understand new york you know in the 90s Jay-Z was establishing his team and just kind of starting on the path to Rockefeller, which is now humongous. Mm -hmm. That can be right. us here. Right. And I want people to realize that. And, and it's like there's so many colleges, too, all over the place that I'm, I'm damn near to the point where I want to go to, like, the graduations and identify, okay, who are the business majors, the accounting majors? And I'll say, who's the top of the class? I need you, 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 and you. Come over here. Let's get this shit started. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because if, if you could take the education and then you could take the drive and the motivation that exists in the scene already and just put it together, we could be really laying the groundwork for something that will be in the hip hop history books. Where, where Dallas, Texas at one time, you know what I'm saying? It, it created itself. We pioneered ourselves. We didn't wait for someone to come over the hill and save us. We did that shit. Right. Most definitely. And we, we can do it. We have we have the numbers and the power and the strength and everything that we need. Now, you said um, there are female rappers out here that can rap circle around the guys. Um, what makes you feel that way? Um, Because I've, I've seen it, you know what I'm saying? I get booked for these all-female MC shows all the time, and I, and I catch female rappers here and there, and, you know, and, and some of them are really fucking good, like real fucking good, like no gimmicks, no bullshit. The lyricism is tight. It's there. You know what I'm saying? And, and I, there was a point in time where I was trying to organize something with myself and um, four other pretty well-known female MCs in the city. I don't know if you're familiar with the Deadly Venoms, mm -hmm. but they were uh, an all-female rap group in the 90s that had five members, all-female rappers. They had Entice. I don't know if you ever heard of her. She was she was probably the most known one. She had like this real high pitched voice, and uh, she had the song "Hush Hush Tip." And uh, anyways, they were the Deadly Venoms, and they were like this girl group of rappers. It was like five of them, and they they put out an album, and it was pretty damn good. But then you know they never really carried on after that, and I imagine that's probably because rappers and, and hip hop in general is very ego oriented. So there's going to be a clash of egos, which is why I think so many rappers choose to remain solo. Mm -hmm. um, but I was trying to not, you know, recreate a group, but maybe just do one or two tracks like that, where it's like five of us just coming in with like a 16 real quick, back to back on, on like a like a real like grimy, like dark like beat, you know what I'm saying? I thought that should be so fire, but I couldn't get it together. And it was, cause it's hard to round up five people and get them to all sit in the same room at the same time. Um, but I was like, 